Hey guys, Brian here, and today I'm going to be working on the SOCOM Gear slash G and G PWS series. This is basically a G and G OEM body and gearbox with Madbull or under SOCOM Gear licensing front end, say the PWS. But basically, it's a G and G with cool parts. So let me go ahead and take this apart, show you how to put it all back together, and explain some cool things on how to do this. So if you guys have any questions or hey, I want to see you work on this gun or that gun, let me know, comment below. Make sure you guys like, comment, and subscribe. Thanks. Enjoy this video. Okay, let's go ahead and take this apart. You're going to have a PWS logo, which is pretty cool. I'm going to use a punch pin and take off the front body pin with a small little hammer. Just tap it out. Okay, it's captured, so don't tap too hard. I'm going to pull on the charging handle just a smidge, get past that bump right there. And what I mean by captured is there's basically a little spring and detent that holds the pin in place. So let's uh, put that down. Let's look at the pop up unit. It's going to be a standard GNG plastic pop up unit and a Madbull type bore barrel. Like I said earlier, you basically have a Madbull inner barrel and then a PWS handguard set by Madbull, of course, to make it a cooler type gun. So let's go ahead. Um, I noticed there's no spring on the front, but there's an the O-ring, which is fine. That holds it in place up against the gearbox. So it's nice and snug. And I'll just put that there. Okay, for the stock, basically I'm going to pull down. Wiggle and bam. Kind of a tight uh, lever, but pull this down and put that aside. Okay. We're good to me plugs, and I do not see a fuse, which is cool. Okay, let me go ahead and use a large Phillips. And there's the screw down in the bottom. Go ahead and take that out. Just gotta find it. There we go. and the screw will come out with a little lock washer. This is interesting because for g and it's slightly different than others. For most rifles, you have like a little washer that goes in here with this, and it basically locks in place. But for g and it's basically that washer is built into the buffer tube. So I guess to take it apart, let me just go ahead and unplug, and just put that aside. And it's pretty simple, you have red and black, you can't really mess it up, so don't worry about that. Okay, now let's go ahead and take it apart further. You're going to have a um, screw, screw, and this is your motor height adjustment in the middle. But take off the base plate, a 2 mil screw, and another 2 millimeter screw, and up and out. And let's see, okay, little screws that hold it in place. Put that aside. And also you're gonna notice a little motor plate. This little silver tab. Don't lose this, it's very important. I'll show you how to put it back in when you finish this video. And take note, motor springy. Because you have red wire and the black wire in the back. So go ahead. Slide it out. Uh, semi torque, it's pretty good. Just a regular long motor, put that aside. And then on the inside, I'm going to find um, four holes but two screws. So I'm going to go ahead and take those off, just like a regular M4. Oh, one screw is there, and the other one did not take out all the way. Couple of twists, there we go. Okay, regular pistol grip comes off, and the two screws for it. Put those over there. Bolt release, basically locks in place. This is non functional, just for looks. And for the magazine release, I'm going to go ahead and use a small Phillips. 
remove that. So you're going to have a small screw, the button, the spring, and the bar itself. Go ahead and put those over there. And now I have a body pin and a body pin. Let me tap, I'm not sure which way it goes. Okay, basically tap it, you have the little ribs or the knurling on there, just so it holds it in place. If you go back and forth, you kind of mess up the plastics and this will become loose. Tap that out, put it over there. And then for the rear pin, gently tap it, comes right out. And done. This is the polymer one, in case you're wondering. Um, it does have flex in it, which is fine. You know, a lot of air softers are saying, oh, if it's plastic and flexes, it's, it's bad. No, this flat, this flexes. Um, the better part about a polymer or even ABS body is this part is stronger than a metal, and this part's stronger than a metal. A metal body will always break here and here first. Plastics, you can drop them and they're fine. Within reason, if you know what I mean. Okay, now this is a traditional Tokyo Rui type gun. You have screws on this side. But no, g and is slightly different. The same concept, you have the screws on this side. So let me go ahead and, I think it's two mil? Yep, it's two mil. So, let's see. There's no reversal latch to pull, but that's fine. I'm gonna go ahead and take it out and use my generic hook tool and use this hook. Pull on the reversal latch and uh, so flip it back over. Okay, I have the screws all pulled out. Um, they're all the cone shapes. Uh, you have the short ones on the top, of course, and the long ones down here. And go ahead and put that to the side. Okay, just for tradition, I'm gonna open it this way like I always do. Uh, fingers on the cylinder and thumb on the back. Looks like you can use the tool if you like. I'm gonna do it this way, lift up, grab that spring and out. Okay, let's check out the internals. Um, some old grease. This gun was uh, given to me to take apart for this video. No idea about the status of it. Um, standard brass bushings. Highly recommend replace those. They will erode. Not the best choice. But no worries. If you're using for stock, you're fine. Metal spring bag. Regular spring. I think this was shooting like 380 or so. That's pretty good. Put that aside. And it looks like regular tablet plate parts. Let's check it out further. A tablet plate. Pretty flexible. Um, not super bendy, but fine. Nozzle. Plastic nozzle, no o ring. Cylinder head, uh, one o ring. And then their swirl um, portipus head. It's like a polycarb. That's good. And the second tooth is removed, which is pretty cool. So this being a short barrel, you have decent porting, which is basically correct, which is pretty cool. Let me put these apart and put these back together and just chill over here. So I take everything else apart. Uh, just there. Okay. G and G gears. Uh, these are steel of some sort, they look fine. I noticed um, the shims on the bushings. It's good. Basically, it's 2016. All airsoft guns come with shims from the lowest of the low to the highest of the high. So nothing to really worry about in case your friend says, oh, no, they're bad or this or that. Okay, regular M4 trigger and spring bent extra. That's fine. Put that over there. And it looks like the safety bar is actually a metal or aluminum. Which is pretty cool. I'm going to go ahead and remove all these and show you how to put it back together. So I'm just going to go ahead and use small Phillips. 
remove it. So I have the, the part that works with the selector plate, works with the trigger, the spring that resets it, and the screw that holds it all together. Put those over there. And then let's take out the wire harness. Okay. Wire harness is held in by this little screw here. It goes on this little loop. And then you have the sliding contact. It looks like standard V2. Okay, I want to put small parts over there. A regular wire harness, if you want to put in a circuit board, you can. More power to you. Put those over there. And then for the cut up lever. Remember, the cut up lever has to be wiggly. You want it to be wiggly, otherwise if it's hit by the sector gear, it's going to stay open like this, and that's full auto only. has to move. So, I'm going to go ahead and remove. So I have the cutoff lever, regular version 2, regular screw to hold it in place, and a little tiny spring that controls it. So without the spring, you're not going to have some auto. If the spring is too tight or the screw is too tight, you're only going to have full auto. So don't lose these parts. Put them over there. And then for the selector plate, I can just slide it off. Oh, it should be. Come on. Okay. I'm just gently pry. That's not good. Okay. Gently pry it off. Uh, no electrical properties, which is fine. So if I wanted to make it some outer, I'd literally just cut that off. And that's how you do it. Now let's go ahead and put the GNG gearbox back together. First up, grab your selector plate and basically slide it in. Kind of tricky. Slide it forward and then back and forth. You have these little lips on the edge. Just make sure it can move freely and you're good. Flip it over and get your cutoff lever. Drop it in place. Get a little screw. And tighten. You can hand tighten, you're good. But make sure that it can wiggle like so. Flip it over and get the little spring to control it. I like to hold with one hand the spring so it doesn't fly off, and the second hand kind of presses it in place. So it's like that. Okay, now let's go ahead and install the trigger set. A regular version 2 trigger, slide it in. Okay, and then go ahead and get a little Phillips. And secure. Going to use a small pick, pull, and make sure you put the wires back how you found them. Basically what I did is I put the wires like this with the red wire on the bottom. As you see, so when I put the motor in, it's not going to cut. It's going to be past it and safe. If you had the red wire
like this, and you're like, oh, it's fine. See how it's on top of this other one, it's too high? You'd slide your motor in, cause damage, instantly short out everything. All bad. Just remember, you just want it to be clear right here. And that's it. Let's go ahead and put in the safety parts. So get a little safety bar. Little selector plate, pop it in. And a little spring. Don't forget the little bar that works with the trigger. Press it on. And as you can see, it moves like that. That's good. Now let's go ahead and put the screw in and tighten it all up. Good. And the trigger. Trigger spring. Trigger. Has a little hole there, it pops in. And this bit, this is bent a little more than others. So I would say uh, guide it in first like this, and then hold it like that. So now you have basically fire, you have safe mode, semi, and full auto. See how the cutoff lever moves for full auto? Semi mode, safe mode. Cool. And since I didn't take the shims out or anything, I literally just took it apart and I'm putting it back together. Uh, the shims are all in the same spot. I'm just going to put it back together. If you need a shimming guide, I would say look on YouTube, you'll find them. But this is in case you want to take apart your G&G and you need some help or you're stuck on something. Um, reversal latch, spring, reversal latch, spring, that orientation, like this, done. Oh. And essentially it's going to be springy like that, so it's pushing against this little wall. Grab your bevel gear, press down the axle, hold it in place, done. So now when you gently hold on the axle and twist, you can hear it clicking. Good to go. Go ahead and leave the sector gear like this. You have smooth on top. That's considered the timing. So when you have the tap-up plate like this and starting, it's not already teeth in the way grabbing and breaking. Almost done. Hang in there, guys. To assemble, you have the nozzle, tap a plate, stick it on like that like that, and of course piston goes in the hole. Pretty good compression. The spring, loop on like this. And go ahead and place it in like so. Done. Make sure you check the little corner up here for the cylinder and up here. And also this hole, you're going to have a matching hole on either side of the gearbox shell. Make sure it's lined up and basically wiggle it. If it doesn't wiggle, you're good. Go ahead and get a little pick, put the spring forward, and check. So you have load, fire, load, fire, like that. Cool. Now check and make sure you have the piston lined up on the rails. As you can see, that's good. If it's off at an angle, it will cause damage and break. Let's go ahead and put it back together. You have the spring. And I'm going to go ahead and Hold the cylinder down, get the spring guide, chop it in there, and as you notice, I have a little peg on the bottom at 9 o'clock or 3 o'clock. That's good, it's not going to jump out. I'm just going to press in a little, and done. Check the wires. Flush, 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 flush. Good. Tap a plate spring is intact. Check the piston. Yes. Good. And basically done. Let me go ahead and close it up. Long screws on the bottom, short screws on the top. Oh, oh wrong tool. Use the two mil again and tighten. 
Just hand tighten, you don't need to over tighten them. Wires in like that. Gently pull. And for safety, have it in semi-auto mode and semi-auto mode. Just so the parts can line up better, otherwise they hit and cause damage. And like what I always do, line it up. Cool. Body pin. good this we can put it in now but it might slide out so I'll just wait until I put the, the lower and upper on mag release spring button and a little baby screw pistol grip. Just going to attach with these two screws. Put those right there. Install the wires. And basically I'm going to have red wire in the front, black wire in the back, and matching the pistol grip. Slide it in. One screw. Tighten. Okay. Now what I just did is basically the red wire is coming up because it's in the front. And I basically kind of forced it around the back so it kind of goes up curves and slides up. So now when I get the motor, red pull in the front, black pull in the back, drop it in, it's springing. That's good. Attach the little motor connectors. Oh, side note. In case this is loose, you can always just gently squeeze. Just a little. now become a tighter fit. Where now, instead of popping up easy, it's on there nice and solid. Okay. Now, the bottom of the motor base, or the pistol grip, you're gonna have this part, and then these two little screws, but you have this little tiny motor plate. This part, when you tighten the screw, it evenly distributes force along this piston, or the, along this motor, and presses. If you press directly on this axle, or if you have this the screw directly on the axle, you're gonna have a lot of problems, you're gonna have excess heat because it's basically jamming it. But when you press on this plastic part, the black part, you're good. And that's where this comes into play. So, for this, literally just stick it in here. But a lot of times if you take this off, it will pop off on the side because of the magnetism and then you don't even see it. So you always wanna make sure and what I'm going to do is basically pull like that and upside down. And boom, done. Tighten. And also you're going to notice it's basically flush on this front part. And that's it. Now let's go ahead and put the stock on. Don't forget the stock ring. Slide that through. Have a little button going in. And then the screw. The screw is kind of tricky. Um, let me straighten this. I don't know. Let 
try again. With the screw out, the wires can easily fit through, which is fine. Now what I'm going to do is try again. Place on the bottom, or on the top, actually. Okay, and got it. It's going to take some finesse, but once you got it, you got it. Plug the wires back in, like so. Secure the screw, line it up, and tighten it. And done. Gently tug, you're fine. Put that back in the buffer tube. Cool. Train stock on. And make bolt release, slide it in. Basically make sure it's flush. Very gentle, but tap up the front end just a little, like so. Okay, front body pin out. Pull on the charging handle to get past this little lump. Done. Press in. And good. And that's basically how you take apart a g, &G based rifle, this being the SOCOM gear, but g, &G body and gearbox and parts, and put it all back together. So you guys, make sure you guys like, comment, subscribe, share with your friends, and if you have any other suggestions, like for work on this gun or that, let me know, comment below, and thanks for watching. See you guys, bye.